fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got traction, he's got rhythm, he's got both of them. Maloney! Oh, he's, he's taking Anderson. Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Six is very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my oh god! My god, what? This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. And it's that time once again, just like that, we are ready to go for the Geodesic GoPro Championship. Round three at Road Atlanta here on the iRacing Esports Network. We're Sim Speed TV. Happy to bring you this fantastic series that just keeps getting better and better round upon round. My name is Reese Gardner for Sim Speed TV and on cameras and joining me in the commentary box, Jay Kennedy. Jay, we're in GTD qualifying once again at the moment. GTD. LM has already been decided double class in this series and we're going racing for 90 minutes around the fantastic road atlanta circuit it's going to be an interesting one for sure it's going to be a fantastic day of racing uh qualifying extremely close in the uh gte or gtlm uh qualifying and uh GTD out on track at the moment is very, very close as well. It's going to be a really, really awesome day of racing and uh, looking forward to seeing how it all plays out because we know that this track produces some incredibly close and incredibly tight racing. So it should be a very, very good show. So make sure you stick around. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the qualifying is just about done. Then we're going to have a 10 minute break. The driver's going to go through their briefing and we'll take a look at the onboard pole laps from both classes. I love watching these cars attacking these laser scanned racetracks. Live pictures out on track at the moment. We're seeing uh, one of the action SimSport Audis, Ferris Stanley, making his way out onto the straight. One of the most important corners on the circuit, actually, that we will highlight in our onboard pole laps. And uh, currently running P2 is, is uh, Ferris, I believe. Uh, Doing okay at the moment. Yeah, he isn't too far off the pole time of Brian Lockwood at the moment. So Lockwood on pole at this current stage, but it's very, very tight. Only one tenth of a second separates second and th uh, first and second at the moment. We'll see if uh, Stanley can jump up on the pole. He's only got one chance left, and that won't be enough at this stage. So uh, he's got one last run to try and put it on pole. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Brian Lockwood uh, taken pole at both of the preceding rounds. He's been pretty dominant in that Mercedes AMG. The Audis in GTD have not had a uh, not had much of a look in in recent times because the Audi tends not to be the best at those high speed circuits like Road America and Phillip Island. It's uh, it, it's got a lot of aero. It's very stiff. Doesn't like the curbs too much, does the Audi. So we take a look at Zach Plummer as he crosses the line here. 17172. That puts him uh, in a pretty good position there in the top five in GTD. Yeah, he's uh, not far off another spot as well. He'll get one more crack and another lap. So uh, 40 seconds left for these drivers to complete their, or to start their final flying run. And uh, Ferris Stanley about to uh, finish his final flying run. We'll see if he can improve. A few drivers still out on track. A few drivers have given up. They know that they can't go any quicker. So qualifying's almost complete before the drivers get in for their driver's briefing. And it looks like Stanley will not improve on this lap. Yeah, unfortunate. So it looks like that secured Brian Lockwood the pole position for the third time in a row, at least for now. Hayden Gober, what can he do? Another one of the action sim sports guys, and they've been involved in quite a bit in GTD over the last couple of rounds. 
bit of drama, a bit of racing action. That's what you want in terms of sim racing. A 17-6 for Hayden Gober. That puts him uh, in position 8 for GTD. Yeah, not too bad. And the uh, positions back in that range, 6, 7, 8, are all separated by less than a tenth. And now we've got 6, 7, 8, 9 as uh, David Browning jumps into 8th position with a 17-6-1, uh, 17-6-2 for Gober and Stepanovsky. 17-6-0, so really, really tight in that little phase there, and uh, one driver left that may be able to put it on pole. Let's here if, we uh, go. Jesper can do it. Yes, Baroni, here we go. Let's have a look at what he can do down the straight. Currently sitting in P3, as you said, running those revs all the way out to the red on the dashboard, no, as done. you do with the Mercedes. Yeah, looks like it. It's unfortunate, but it looks like most of our fields have been decided. With that, Jay, I think it's time to uh, take a look at the onboard pole laps and uh, introduce our special guest for tonight. Yeah, we do have a special guest jumping in with us, and uh, final lap just completed there as uh, Pereira jumps in to no time, so uh, he will not improve. But uh, yeah, we will get some onboard laps in a minute, and we'll introduce our guest right now, I think, Rex. Yep, exactly. Joining us in the commentary box, we've got uh, a very, very special guest, as uh, as we seem to say ad nauseum. He's, he won the 2016 Mazda Road to 24 shootout, and he's managed to carve himself a very good real-life racing career out of sim racing. Glenn McGee joining us in the commentary box. How are you, Glenn? Doing well. Uh, I'm excited to uh, be back watching some esports and excited to see some great racing today. Well, uh, Mazda MX-5's uh, your point of specialty in real life racing, and it's how you got there in the first place. But uh, these GT cars, they are a different beast, and Road Atlanta is certainly a fantastic circuit to take these things around. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, obviously more power than the MX-5, and I actually coach a lot of real life pro drivers now that race these cars so it's, it's interesting to get their input uh, I've got guys that run the Mercedes and actually run the Audi as well and uh, both of them have have wrecked the car here before so it's not an easy track certainly not we're looking at Robert Harris's pole lap in GTLM right now coming up to turn three and that uh, that turn three curb that he's just bounced off now that is very important sets up the entire rest of your lap through these S's and you've got to avoid riding these curbs as much as possible but this curb on the other hand you can run all the way out smashing over the bumps down into this banked right hander leading onto the slowest corner on the circuit Glenn this is followed by the back straight you need to nail the throttle out of that one yeah a lot of guys will overshoot turn seven that that slow corner and uh, they'll break too late but really they need to be focused on on getting their braking done early and getting back to that power because it's an easy uh passing opportunity at the end of the straightaway so they have to get it done if they don't get it right then they're going to get passed as well so very important corner yeah speaking of passing zones there goes harris through 10 a and b at the end of the lap all the way out onto the exit curb a little bit of oversteer in the porsche 911 rsr but he keeps it flat towards the end of the lap, and that was a very good lap from Harris. A 14.693, again, showing his supremacy in qualifying pace. And now, Glenn, we're going to take a look at the GTD pole lap from uh, a guy that you have connections with, Mr. Lockwood. Yeah, uh, it's cool to see Brian. So Brian Lockwood actually uh, races for our professional team on Six Sideways in the MX-5 Cup. So he's... Uh, been experiencing that virtual to reality uh, transition and uh, I've actually been coaching him in real life so it's interesting uh, to see how talented he is and somebody else kind of from my genre coming from the virtual side and how talented he is there and working with him in real life and now he's now I get to watch him uh, back doing these races and he's doing really well in them so uh, we'll see how he does uh, this this evening yeah pole lap uh, showing that the combination of raw talent and coaching it uh, works wonders certainly you see how smooth the gtds are over those bumps in the middle of the s's section and lockwood going all over the curbs a little bit more stability in the mercedes thanks to its abs and traction control of course we don't know how much of those driver aids brian lockwood is using 
I can imagine it's not at 100%. You need a little bit more control over what the car's doing on a pole app like this, but you got a little bit, a uh, little bit blocked in the middle of this lap, but that has given him a fantastic slipstream down the back straight here. And that's going to line him up very well for this one. It's uh, actually only a tenth separating him between uh, between himself and the second place man, Ferris Stanley. But Brian Lockwood nonetheless managing to secure pole once again. Looking at the lap too, he's uh, done a really good job considering the, the traffic as well. It, he probably could have gone a little bit quicker because he was balked a little bit there into 10A, 10B. So... Uh, a really impressive lap there from Brian Lockwood. A great time of a 16.595. Well, we've got four and a bit minutes left until we go green flag racing. So thanks to building optimization systems, obviously, for their sponsorship of our replays on SimSpeed TV on the iRacing Esports Network. A big thanks to Building Optimization Systems because they are putting up some prize money for this round as well. $50 in cash for the winners of each class. That's a cool little incentive and uh, that should mean that the racing will be a little bit more spicy at the front. They'll be thinking about this race as well as championship. So it adds an extra element for these guys. Uh, a bit of prize money always uh, changes the way that people behave and people race. Proper dash for cash, Glenn. What are your thoughts? Well, usually, uh, you know, we have a pro race. We call it the money race. We get 80 grand if you win it. And our racing, usually we try to kill each other to begin with. But I, the money usually involved uh, makes people even more aggressive. <laughs> so, but I think it's great to have uh, that they're, you know, we have sponsors putting up money for that. You know, it, it makes everybody a little more hungry and, and work that much harder and, and the racing that much better. So it's great to see that kind of support for esports racing like this. Let's talk briefly about strategy going into this. We've seen a fairly regular pattern emerge of the last couple of rounds. The GTDs can't quite make the full hour on a fuel tank, but the GTDs go for about an hour and 10 minutes on average. So there's, uh, Jay, there's, there's quite a bit of jigging around to do in terms of strategy that these guys have to deal with. Yeah, 100%. It's... Uh going to be a, an interesting little phase of the race as we know there's a, a pit stop involved and, and doing that at the right time has been so critical it's changed the complexion of the race when guys have mistimed when they've done that pit stop coming out in traffic and of course the traffic here is going to be such a big key as well because it is so difficult to pass a slower class car if you catch them at the wrong spot you could lose two three four five ten seconds yeah certainly could chief among them that S's section from turn three all the way down to uh, turns five and six. Glenn, uh, have you been through here in real life, first off? And second, how difficult is it to uh, negotiate traffic in that section? Um, yes, I've been here in real life. It's one of my favorite tracks. Actually, one of my first races was, were here, and I actually own the professional racing lap record here for the MX5 Cup, so it's the track nice. I like. Um, yeah, but it's uh, also... Uh, it. it it uh, awards risk taking. So if you use some of those curbs, uh, for, uh, for instance, the exit of five, um, turn one is a high entry, a lot of risk on exit as well, and turn three as well. Um, if you dare to use the curbs, which can bounce you off, um, you can also gain time. So it's in a 90 minute race, it's, you know, if you want to gain some extra time, start using the curbs, but you're really risking a lot to. Uh, to use that potentially going off. But I would say the key areas where a talented driver can make up or where you can really make up some time is turn one, uh, turn three, and uh, particularly turn five. And these cars actually, the MX-5 will, will gather up those um, bumps really easily. But these cars actually, unless you have somebody who can do some voodoo work with the dampers, uh, you don't want to use too much curb. The car will react kind of funny. So the guys that have figured out the setup for turn five to, to actually take that exit curbing uh, flat out, uh, we'll have a huge advantage and maybe a passing opportunity uh, going into six. I certainly will. We've got uh, under 30 seconds to go now until the session ticks over. Hopefully the uh, the drivers have gotten the briefing done nicely, as they usually have. Interestingly, looking at the qualifying results, uh, Andrew Caron up in second place in GTLM. We haven't seen him uh in round two we had to had to take a miss but 
it was interesting seeing him come through the field and fight in round one and he's not that far behind harris so it'll be interesting to see how he does jay yeah it will be um it's going to be great to see these guys work their way through the field and there will be a couple that will have to work their way through the field as well william whalen will start from the pit lane with a penalty carrying over from philip island so that'll be interesting for him and uh dan king as well uh will start from the pit so a couple of guys with some penalties carrying over from that very very interesting round a controversial round we had at philip island but uh, yeah, it'd be great to see um, Andrew Caron start from the front of the field instead of the back. And uh, he versus Rob Harris, the uh, qual time's only, what, that under a tenth of a second, half a tenth um, of a second. It uh, will be very, very interesting to see how that goes. Certainly will. Also keep a lookout in GTLM for Tyson Meyer starting from fourth. He's the guy who uh, who won the first round at Road America, and he certainly put on a good show at Phillip Island. Look out for him and the rest of the geodesic guys, the likes of Olivier and Broll, uh, up the front as well. In terms of GTD, guys to look out for, obviously we've got Lockwood. He's won the last two races on the trot, and um, a lot of people would expect him to do the same here. Keep an eye out for Jesper Drilica, though, starting from third place. He, uh, he had a good one at round one. Be interesting to see how he goes. Here is the grid then. Robert Harris and Andrew Carroll on row one for GTD. Dominic Olivier and Tyson Meyer join them on row two. Broll and Johansson, row three. And Trevor Clement and Marcus Deck rounding out the top eight in GTLM. As we go into the rest of the GTLM field, Seth Pierce and Anthony Pisano round out the top ten. Thomas Hens making an appearance. Starting 11th, Justin Rem, Philip White, Jason Withrow, top 14. And then our field rounded out by Simon Avital and Tracy Nolte. And there is one more being William Whalen, who, as we said, will start from the pits. We go to the GTD field with Brian Lockwood and Ferris Stanley on the front row. Jesper Droka and John Miller on the next row. Very, very close between those top four, actually between the top five, because Zach Plummer is only two hundredths of a second back in Jack Anderick. Older Stefanowski and David Browning, the top eight in GTD. Then Hayden Gober and Shane Cameron on the next row. Ryan Oliver and Andrew Taylor. Then Gabriel Pereira, the last driver to put in a lap time. As we said, William Whalen will start from the pits. Jordan Fisher did not put in a lap time. As we said as well, Dan King will start from the pits. For our 32-car field, 17 in GTLM and 15 in GTD two competitive fields we got a full lap before we get the green flag so a little bit of time before we get underway estimated 73 laps of racing which is uh, going to be really interesting a very very long race lap wise uh, a fairly short lap time in comparison to what we've seen throughout the season so far yeah certainly road atlanta um just over four kilometers long glenn but it's got a high average speed which means you end up completing that distance in a shorter time than you expect yeah, I think um, we'll see. We'll probably end up seeing a lot of traffic in this race, so the guys will will have to constantly be trying to negotiate that. Um, but yeah, it's really uh, really fun lap. You're working a lot, but you get that straight away. The rest, um, but but yeah, it's a shorter track than you think because of the speeds. Absolutely is well. Gridding time is uh, two minutes in these sessions at Road Atlanta, so you're getting a very good view of our GTLM field. And there is Robert Harris finally loading in at the end of it all. A very colorful field we've got as well in this series. Matches up nicely with the uh, with the green and red surrounds of Gainesville, Georgia, Jay. Some beautiful liveries we've seen in this series. Some really, really nice looking cars and some new teams that we, we don't normally see here on SimSpeed. It's great to have a whole different list of drivers and names and superstars out on track that we don't normally see and uh, it's been great to showcase a whole new group of drivers which have also made the step across quite a few of these guys and, and raced in Oceanic Endurance Championship we saw last weekend as well so great to see a, a real big cross section of drivers going everywhere and, and joining in with other series that we broadcast here on SimSpeed. Absolutely and uh, the formation lap you can see already most drivers having to run side by side because of the circumstances, but you can see there's not much room there through the S's. It's basically one line only through this particular section of the track. It is wide, yes, but 
Not much room off the racing line. And up over this rise, very easy to spin the rears up if you don't have traction control at your disposal. And Brian Lockwood there, Glenn. He's looking very calm in a virtual sense. <laughs> well, I've lost my feet for the moment, but I can tell you Brian is in a real car. Is very, his hands move around quite a bit, but he's actually very calm. So, uh, very intelligent driver, so I think that'll bode well. Up onto the back straight then. The GTLM field have separated out. And they will be taking their green flag separately, as we usually do. One thing that uh, has been spoken about, sorry, Race, to cut you off there, is the, the gap was not big enough between the two fields at uh, Phillip Island. Of course, we saw that big incident at the start of the race where we had a couple of cars off, and then the field bunched up. We had GTD and GTLM all mixed up together, and it caused a little bit of controversy. So the, uh, the fields have decided to, to separate themselves a little bit further to make sure that... Uh, there's no issues like we had last round, or hopefully less issues than what we had last round. Yes, indeed. Well, they've only got a few more turns to go before they can put the hammer down. Question, of course, being when is Harris going to go to 100% throttle? The pace car is going to come in right after this chicane. Harris already in low gear, ready to go. Round three of the Geodesic GoPro Championship finally is go. And Harris getting a good start there, managing to stake his claim to that lead. Caron may be in a little bit of trouble coming into turn one. Got Olivier on the inside, going for the move. Olivier makes a little bit of contact. Oh, oh no. Caron's around. And that's going to catch up just about the entire GTLM field. The track's blocked. We've got cars oh, upside no. down. It's uh, chaotic to say the least. Oh, and we have dear. a caution. Already, Glenn. That was a real shame, that was. Oh, uh, yeah, that's terrible. It's <laughs> it's part of racing, and it seems like 50% of the time, you're with with this many cars, something's going to happen. But uh, I'm watching the replay here now. Yeah, oh, my goodness. It just looks to me like, uh, thanks, of course, to building optimization systems for the replay sponsorship. Uh, Olivier going for the move on Caron, but making a little bit of contact on him at the exit, and then that just brought the Geodesic guys into each other. Good avoidance by Tracy Nolte there in the pink BMW, have to say. Yeah, the speed's really high there. I mean, once there's a car spun in front of you, the only option you have is the bell to the left. If you try and go right, the car's not going to hold. You're basically going to end up with the car in front of you. So a lot of the guys had almost nowhere to go and to react that quickly at that speed. This is the view from Thomas Hinz's perspective. You can see the incident happening just up ahead and caught right in the middle of it all was Hinzy. He won't be happy about that. Ending up almost on his roof. Big battlefield of cars down at turn three. Let's take a look at what happened from Trevor Clements' uh, view on the back of his rear wing. He got an excellent view of all of this right into the back of the geodesic Ferrari. So it didn't take long for drama to ensue in our GTLM field. And now we are under caution. Harris is still leading, so that's exactly what he would want. But we've got a lot of casualties out there, Jay. It looks like we've got three cars that, uh, or two cars that have decided that they might be done. They uh, both ended up on their roof. That was Oliveira and Hins. So those guys... Uh, uh, now, in the pits, looks like they might be day done already. We've got a few other drivers that were involved there that have come into the pits. Tyson Myers come in to get some damage fixed. Uh, but a few others that look like they might have got away with it. Uh, but I'm sure Race Control will be thoroughly looking that one over and trying to dissect how that one unf unfolded and uh, what actually happened there. Yeah, well, there'll, there'll be a lot of work to do, has to be said. Well, um, the pace car has picked up one of the GTDs up at the uh, the front of that particular section. Clement going into the pits to repair some of that uh, very... Uh, I'm trying to come up with, uh, with a descriptor for that damage, but it's just not coming to me. There's been quite a bit of carnage happening out there at the moment. It's... Uh doesn't quite look like the the way the Ferrari comes out of the shop at the moment. That uh, no, that Ferrari <laughs> looks a bit secondhand. But uh, hopefully we see if you guys <laughs> get waved by the, uh, the 
pace car. I just see Dan King's been waved by, as has Andrew Taylor and Hayden Gober as well, who uh, did start in the pit. So he is uh, already a lap down, which is going to be tough for him to come back from. And a big decision by race control to, to kick things off. Dominic Olivier instantly disqualified from the race for that wow. incident in turn one. Post-race review, they are saying, but he will not be taking further part in this session. It's a quick decision there from race control. Obviously, they uh, they have some different views that they can go to that we don't, so uh, they can they can review it in a bit of a, a different way in a different manner to us. And uh, One thing that has been really positive about this series so far is the very, very quick decisions very, very fair decisions, and the GDSI guys are, are not scared to penalise their own drivers and penalise their own drivers very, very harshly. Absolutely yeah. not. That's really important too, I think, in, in our series too. We, I mean, once if you're letting guys run amok, it just it gets worse and worse, and you set a culture. So it's really good to uh, see the officials make a decision really quickly. It's even good for the drivers too, because then at least you know uh, if you do get a penalty, say it's a pit stop, you, you kind of know where where how to run your race from there you know so yeah exactly that um that's actually a good point that you raised there glenn because strategy is going to start coming into it almost instantly these guys will have plenty of opportunities under this caution period to save fuel shorten their pit stop times they uh, will have a full amount that they will need to complete the race with but uh it's going to result in a bit of strategy jigging. Speaking of which, green flag. We are back racing and leading the field away. Once again is Robert Harris. Enzo Johansson in tow. Already seeing a couple of moves almost being made down in the back of the GTLM field, but it looks like they've gotten through turn one much cleaner this time. It's on for second and third, though, in GTD is Drilica and Stanley side by side. And Jesper Jalika through, and Stanley's going to hold up this little pack behind. So Miller and Marcus Deck, who's trying to make his way back through after being uh, spun around from that incident, he's now stuck in the middle of the GTD pack. Yeah, and that's not going to be optimal for him. Remember, the GTLMs, they have more downforce and more mid-corner grip than the GTD. Oh, my oh, no. goodness, there we go. Contact ahead, John Miller, and that was Ferris Stanley making contact and I need to quickly review that because obviously Miller went for the move but did they make contact yeah, I think a, they did yeah very late lunge and oh. yeah that's uh it's not going to be uh liked too much from race control there they I'll will take a uh, very dim view of that yes you're not wrong well the race is still going on in the midst of all of this Johansson's been able to keep the gap consistent to Harris out front. Meanwhile, Jack Anderek fighting with Zach Plummer for fourth place in GTD. And we'll be able to see the differences between the Mercedes and the Audi around this track. Road Atlanta, it's a, it's a circuit that has a, an awful lot of cornering grip that you must maximize. You've got to be careful of those curbs all the time. And what a fantastic view that is through Whoa. the S's. Whoa, hang on a minute. Yeah, I saw that too. What happened? Uh, we've got a couple of cars. One flying through the air, literally. Deary me. Okay, so Anthony Pisano has had a bit of an adventure, evidently. Yeah, and uh, Jonathan Brolt as well. So, Oh! Goodness me. And oh, yeah. Go. Okay, that's... Um, that explains that. that that's that's going to be an issue. Certainly <laughs> is. Well, wow. Wow. That, that was unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, we've, we've had quite a few casualties in this one, more than I expected, to be sure. Yeah, 100%. It's uh, been a little bit disappointing so far, but what we, or uh, well, the guys we still have out on track, we know how racy they can be. Uh, this is now a chance for some other names to get themselves forward and get some decent points from this series while they have the opportunity now. Yeah, certainly. It's, a, it's an extra opportunity for points. Yeah, you can see in that accident, by the way, he got up on the curb, and that curb, sometimes the car will take it wrong, and that's what sent the car into the wall. He got kicked back on the track, and that's the other car came to meet him, and uh, that was just uh, an unfortunate hit on the curb that set the car sideways. It's unfortunate for Anthony Pisano. He didn't really do anything wrong. He just, wrong place, wrong time. 
It's, it's lined so, up there too. And it's so hard to adjust your line. Like, all right, you might see the car ahead, but because you're so committed, it's so hard to sometimes change your direction and, and slow down enough. If you brake too hard to try and check up, you then spin the car around as well. So it, it's really hard. You're almost a passenger at that point too. So unfortunate for him. Yeah, and that goes back to setup. Um, you know, some of these guys have, have figured out the setup a little better better than others and that turn five it, you want to take as much curb as you can but sometimes you hit it and it, it accepts the curb really well and sometimes you hit it and the car just goes off in one direction and uh, it seems to be that that's what happened well there's william whalen making the move on tracy nolte there nolte of course one of the one of the drivers who's had better luck through that lap one skirmish and so found themselves in the top five now top six got a bunch of very quick guys trying to find their way past meanwhile in gtd car 39 that's jordan fisher he's currently involved in a fight with uh, one of the team huge ass guys shane cameron and of course it's a big day for team huge ass they're uh, actually oh Oh dear, that's not going to help things. We'll have to abandon that train of thought just for a second. Yes, Pedralica in trouble. Yeah, turn three claims another victim. Just uh, bounced it off the curb a little bit too much, cut the curb a little bit too oh. aggressively, and it's just unsettled the car. It's uh, disappointing for him. He was going along a right and made himself uh, a couple of spots, but he's had to let the whole field through. Rejoins back in 14th position, but it's on for podium spots at the front. GTLM. This is a very close race for the lead here. Harris from Johansson, from Caron. Andrew Caron once again showing his worth in this series. And he's got a very good view of the top two from that position in his German office. You can see the, the speeds at which they take these turns as well in the GTLMs. A bit more aerodynamic capability on these things. Yeah, I, I drove both before this uh, race, and um, the, the GTLMs with the extra downforce definitely help. Yeah, it doesn't help much over the curbs, though. As you can see, Harris having a slight issue just up ahead. He's managing to keep it, uh, keep the whole thing under him. But you are struggling with the rear end of the car all the way through this, uh, through a lap around here. Update from race control. Uh, car 101, that's Pereira. He's been given a 30-second stop and hold for causing a collision. And the incident with Miller, uh, no further action. That uh, incident for Pereira would have been the contact just through that corner that he uh, went through. We saw the... Which car was it that was spun around? I can't remember now. Been so much going on, I've already forgotten. Yeah, man, it's 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 been quite the eventful race, hasn't it? But uh, race control, nonetheless, run on top of these penalties, and I guess uh, the races just continue to go on regardless. Philip Wyatt and Justin Rem, ninth and tenth in GTLM. Not much of a difference between these guys, but they are teammates, so they got to be careful how they race each other. Meanwhile, it's just had a change of position off. here. Sorry, Rex, uh, plumber through on Andrax. So that's happened at the exit of turns 10. I'd say turns 10 because there's two, and we've just had another change of position because Caron now through Johansson's had an issue here. Yeah, and wow, Harris is nowhere to be seen. So something's obviously happened there in the top three. Let's oh! take a look. Oh, goodness me. Once again, it's that uh, it's that surface change out of turn five, Glenn, catching guys out. Glenn's just having oh. a couple of issues with uh, with getting his eye racing see, sorted. So, yeah, he made a he made a genuine effort to try and recover that thing, but it was already too far gone. Yeah, that was a tough one, and uh, the good part of it looks like he might not have got away with uh, any wheel damage or anything like that. And there's a fairly big gap back to the next place car, Jonathan Withrow. So he hasn't lost too much ground. He's just lost that one spot. But uh, this battle between Fisher and Pereira is still going on. And of course, as you said, Pereira with the penalty over his head as well. He'll have to come in and serve that very, very soon. Yes, yes sorry, I missed that. Uh, I, I just caught it, but it, yeah, it looks like he hit the curb. And it sent him in the wall. He actually, he actually recovered it pretty well. I think he can... Uh, 
Well, he hit it pretty bad, actually, <laughs> looking at it again, so uh, I can you see might, his steering's a little off, so, yeah. Might have a bit of extra time to spend in the garage, eh? <laughs> yeah, I think his uh, suspension's slightly askew now. Just a little bit. And have a look at the lead that uh, Brian Lockwood's already got on the second place car, John Miller. Gap at the moment, eight seconds in the first 15 minutes of racing. That's an incredible gap at the front of uh, GTED. It's a, a really good drive at the moment from Lockwood. Yeah, and he's got Marcus Steck behind him looking to make his way up, and you can see the amount of damage on that GTLM. It's not going to help the straight line speed of that Porsche. Brian Lockwood carrying a little bit of damage to the front himself, but it doesn't seem to have affected his pace all that much. He's actually keeping up with, uh, with the back of the GTLM field up here. He's got Wyatt and Rem just up ahead of him here. Yeah, it looks like he's ran a 17.4 that last lap, and the, G the GTLM's in front of him, 17 flats, high, uh, low 17, so it's pretty good. So uh, pace is really, really good, and yeah, as you said, he's not far off as uh, we're just seeing Pereira into the pits to serve that penalty. His pace is so much quicker than everyone else. Last lap by, he just did the fastest lap of the race in that class, a 17.4-0, uh, sorry, 17.4-1. The next fastest lap time is a 17.9, so he's a full half second quicker than every other car in that class. He's uh, doing a great job. Yeah, and there goes Marcus Steck past our GTLM leader, Mr. Lockwood, through that banked turn. One of my favourite turns on the track, actually leading right into the slow right angle right hander onto the back stretch, and he's going to have a very nice slipstream as Mr. Lockwood, but for the lead in GTLM, certainly on. Andrew Caron's really turned it up in the last few laps, fighting Robert Harris quite hard. Only six tenths separating these guys. Uh, fastest lap of the race has gone to Andrew Caron, a 15.6. So uh, a little bit quicker than what we're seeing from Rob Harris. He's Harris's best lap time, 15.9. Last lap by another tenth in the favour of Caron. So he's absolutely flying in there blitzing away from the rest of the field. Seven tenths quicker than Johansson that last lap. Who is the next fastest car out there? So he's, uh, these two guys are in a class of their own right at this present stage. Gabriel Pereira has uh, exited the pits, I believe. Yeah, he served his penalty. Yeah, so it looks to me as though uh, a 21 second transit time Yeah, drive through. Had so, looks like it wasn't a 30 second stop and hold. Either way, he's going to have quite a bit of work to do to get back up to the front of that field, but he's got plenty of time. There's an hour and 10 at least left in this one. Caron's closed the gap even further. You can see visually that it's closed in. We'll see what the times are this time. 15.9 and a 15.7, so two tenths favour of Andrew Caron. I think we're going to see a really interesting battle for the lead in this uh, overall race in the next little bit as I've just seen uh, Ryan Oliver in the pits and he stopped for a little while and Gabriel Pereira also looks like he may be day done. Yeah well as uh, just as we cut away from Pereira I was still watching him on my end and he went off into the grass so not quite sure what's going on there, but as you said, day probably done for him. So not a good day for the Sailors Racing Team. Jesper Drulica having to start from the... Oh, okay. Problems for Tracy Nolte. Thanks to Building Optimization Systems oh. for educating me on what's happened. Oh, that is pretty <laughs> immense. It's in contact there with... Uh, who is that? That's uh, the Ferraris at Philip Wyatt, I believe. Oh. Yeah, it is. Oh, almost contact. And then... Oh, that's a that's a strange incident. It looks like Nolte ran wide. Need to dissect that further. It's uh, let's have a look. So Wyatt had the run, obviously coming into turn one. It looks like he backed out. Nolte went really hard into turn one. Ran about a car width on the inside. I guess Wyatt thought I'll try and grab that, but then ran out of track. Yeah, I think he just overdrove the corner and yeah, as you said, ran out of room and. All of a sudden, he's made contact, so unfortunate there for Nolte. And another incident from Race Control to uh, to look over. They've uh, had a busy race so far. I think they've had more to look at in this race so far than they did for the whole of the first round. 
Yeah, and we're not even half an hour in, which is, uh, you know, it really says something about the, uh, the job that race control has to do here. But this lead battle is absolutely enthralling right now. Uh, Caron still managing to take little chunks of time out of Harris. He took another tenth out of him on the last lap. So, looking like this will eventuate in quite the battle for the lead. The question is, how does the BMW handle fuel strategy versus the Porsche? One thing I've noticed is that uh, under all of the caution laps, so the, the pace lap and the uh, the caution periods, Harris was saving a big chunk of fuel. Caron, not so much. So he's been a little bit more uh, concentrating on the outright pace as opposed to worrying about fuel saving. It's, uh, not the easiest circuit to fuel save on. There is one big area you can save a chunk of fuel, but sometimes it, it can distract you too much trying to concentrate on fuel saving. So if you're in a, in a rhythm, you're better off not worrying about it as it's now down to three tenths of a second. This is excellent. And you can see both of them attacking those curbs a fair amount. Not an easy thing to do in the GTLMs. Gabriel Pereira has retired from the race and hasn't uh, hasn't wasted any time making his feelings known about his penalty, has to be said. <laughs> you know, it strikes me too, uh, there's a lot of attrition in this race and, and some of these guys, a lot of it's caused from these curves. I mean, how unpredictable they are, how, how unpredictable the car is over the curves. So I think some of these guys that maybe are a little bit smarter about their curb usage during the race might find themselves in a, a higher position as as the race goes on and, and the guys that aren't taking every single risk every single lap that's it we got to think about track temp to factor into this as well uh 25 degree track and it's nice and sunny out there at the moment so it's not the hottest track in the world but there's a lot of uv rays hitting the tarmac surface heating up that rubber and making things probably a little bit slippery for the guys out there. Last lap time for Robert Harris, 116.121. Last lap time for Andrew Caron, 116.121. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Amazing, amazing. That shows you just how intense these guys are fighting at the moment. All over the exit curb and the rear end getting a little unsettled on that BMW as well, I have to say. Caron is pushing it very hard, but we've got to remember, he did start out as a sim drifter, so he knows what to do when it gets sideways. Yeah, that car is usually pretty stable. They must have it set up. Uh, he must ha like to have it as set up as loose as you can get it, pretty much. So it'd be interesting to see. It's good at, at maintaining the tires, though, so we'll, we'll see how well it goes. But I'd like to see these guys where they're at uh, after the pit stops, because it could get really interesting with, with how close their lap times are. Just noticed then, too, Caron was out of the throttle really early to start saving fuel, so he's now realized mm. he's within the draft range, not close enough to make passes. There's the perfect time to save fuel, shorten that pit stop. As we know all the time, Reese, we say it so often, so much easier to make a pass in the pit lane than it is out on the track. Absolutely, and nowhere is that more true in North America than at Road Atlanta, possibly Long Beach as well, but uh, it's basically the same kind of philosophy. It's not easy to pass out on track at a place like this, so if you can do it in the pits, absolutely take it. A little bit more oversteer once again from Caron. He is pushing that BMW so hard right now, trying to keep it within that range of Robert Harris. And Harris actually looking pretty calm out in front there. He doesn't seem all that troubled by the presence of Caron behind him. Just as you said that, though, I absolutely missed the apex by a mile. And that's going to ruin the run onto the back straight here. Caron's going to close up so much. The overspeed will be incredibly quick. It's recoverable. It is. It's recoverable, though, because you, you got to remember, sometimes uh, it, it's, it's the angle at which you attack the corner as well. You can run a little bit wide in that slow turn, but uh, as long as you get on the throttle nice and quickly, you'll be able to carry that momentum down the straight. Yeah, 100%. It's very, very true. But... Some people do actually run a, a wider line, depending on the way that your car's set up as well. So it, it is a very, very good point to make. And again, across the line, identical times again, 16-2, 16-2. So these two very, very evenly matched at the front of GTD. Have a look at the gap now Brian Lockwood has. 
nearly 11 seconds. This is incredible, the pace that he's got at the moment. The only driver in the 1 minute 17 bracket in this class, he did a 17.6 last time by. Business yeah, as yeah. usual for Brian Lockwood. <laughs> Yeah, that guy can be a machine uh, and just plug away at laps. And uh, I noticed he was had a bit of draft there and was using that from the GTLM class as well. So uh, it's nice to it must be nice for him to extend his lead like that. Karen was very very close in the shoot between uh, seven and eight there, but uh, it's dropped off a tiny little bit. So there is some other battles going on in this class too. Because have a look. William Whalen, remember we said he started in the pits in, uh, in that uh, number three car. He's already in a fifth and about to try and get a move done here on oh Jason Withrow. This is incredible. This is a great drive. Yeah, fantastic from William Whalen. And he's wasting no time getting the anchors on for 10A and 10B. Withrow lets him through very nicely. I'm very impressed by Whalen's pace in this opening stint. He's managed to get himself now into the top four in GTLM. It's been a bit of a fight back in the field though, Reese. Uh, we just see there Marcus Deck and Philip White. Deck ahead mm. at this point, but uh, they're about to change positions in this replay. They certainly are. And over that hump in the back stretch, which used to be a lot higher. Yeah, you can see the lack of straight line speed from Marcus Deck thanks to that damage. Wyatt taking big advantage of that. Now, what happens in the braking zone? Deck pushing very hard through here. Does Wyatt run wide? No. Deck manages to get the better exit. Well, that's a difficult place to run side by side, for sure. They managed to make it work just. Yeah, and while the straight line speed has been compromised for Deck, one thing it may have done, it may have helped the car handle a little bit better because it just looks like it's moving on the track a lot better, a lot smoother. So uh, he's able to, to pull away through the S's and through the, the tight twisty parts, and then as soon as they get on the straight, these guys are closing that gap back up. But uh, Justin Ram right tucked under that rear wing, Philip White right now. Yeah, the two teammates down at the lower reaches of the top 10, and... Rem looks like he's staking his claim for a move, but Wyatt not letting him go that easy. I like that. You know, it's it's always good to see teams with um, with a have added attitude to racing. I mean, they're both out on track for the same reason, aren't they? It's uh, always good to see teammates racing, but uh, from the commentary box, it's always awkward to see them make contact. I always love to be a fly on the wall through those sort of incidents, and we just see the move there. Good job there from. Justin Rem getting through. I didn't think he was going to be able to do it, but uh, White's just ended up giving up the spot there. I think he realised that it was just a matter of time, and it's back on again. Ferris Stanley and his recovery. He's got back up to six, and he's not far off getting a move done on Andrak here. Yeah, it's um, these guys have been close for the last couple of laps. Andrak an 18.629, Stanley an 18.620. Not much separating these guys at all. Jordan Fisher is sitting pretty just ahead of these guys. So, I guess, for Ferris Stanley, his first mode of operation is to get by Anderek and then try and chase down uh, Mr. Fisher up ahead. But through that bank turn, you can see Anderek using a lot more of the curb than Stanley was. Oh, have a look at that. That's a Compromise really run. good run off the apex from Ferris Stanley. A little bit of overspeed too, so Stanley might have enough pace. I see it's a little kinky whether he moves to the side and has to think about throwing up the inside. Oh, oh good defensive driving. Lock. Have a look at that. And Anderek. Tiny bit of oversteer through the mid corner there, but he's managed to keep it. Good move. Well, good, yeah. good driving there, I should say. Not move. He didn't make a move, but uh, someone has made a move backwards. <laughs> Marcus Dex oh. lost two spots. Something's happened here through uh, the first couple of corners. We were saying his car was handling a little bit better. Doesn't handle too well when you bounce it over the turn one curb, though. Nah, that uh, that curb. It's it's a lot like cops at Silverstone. That um that turn one. It's like. Cops if there was a hill in the middle of it, basically. You gotta you gotta try and line up the apex nicely. Don't take too much of the curb, because it will unsettle the car. Meanwhile, 
Dan King. This is a guy that we got to keep a lookout for. The uh, the top dog there at Geodesic Racing. He had to start from the pits as well, but he's made his way up into the top 10 in GTD already. Last lap by a full second quicker than Shane Cameron, so this could be a move in the next little bit. We're just going to cut ahead, though, because Vera Stanley's got another run onto the back straight. Might be able to get a move done here. Maybe, maybe. But Anderek moving over to cover the inside once again. So Stanley doesn't have much choice but to lift off, save an extra couple mils of fuel. And start again, try and do it on the next lap. Yeah, He's one thing is he can defend uh, and save fuel at the same time. He's losing time to the guys in front when he defends, but he can save fuel at the same time. So I, I typically don't like to defend. I like to, if there's a guy faster than me, I let him by and then follow him up to the next group. But it, there might be a fuel strategy uh, playing into that as well. Yeah, thinking about track position as well, it can really uh, make or break your race, especially around a track like this, especially in a multi-class race, because when the GTLMs start coming up to the GTDs through uh, sections like the S's, you're probably going to see a bit of drama ensue. Hopefully not so much for these guys out the front. Harris and Caron continuing to trade blows. And Caron is closer to Harris than he's ever been. These guys have been absolutely identical in regards to lap pace too, which is great to see. It's always awesome to see two cars so evenly matched for pace from different marks, different teams. To, uh, to see them so close on track and matching lap times is always awesome to watch, but... You'd wonder whether Caron's going to try and make a move or whether he's just happy using this draft and now starting to save fuel. You could see before he's been starting a fuel save and it looks like it's getting a little bit more aggressive each and every lap, that fuel saving from Caron. So uh, might be at the point now where he's thinking, well, I will pass at the pits. It's much easier to do. Making their way past GTD traffic. That's Hayden Gober in the action sim sport Audi. They both managed to get by him. A little bit more awkwardly for Caron than it was for Harris, though he's lost a little bit of time there. Those other battles are still continuing on, so despite the pace that Dan King had over Shane Cameron, wasn't able to get past. Gonna have to uh, try and work his way through somehow. Not going to be easy to get past. As we said, all race, this is a tough track to pass on. And, uh, some cars will find it a little bit easier than others, but in the uh, in the GTDs, through the uh, the twisties, probably not the best spot to try and make a pass. But down into turn ten, into the uh, the chicane, definitely the best passing opportunity. Absolutely, and we may see something interesting eventuating up ahead because it's side by side and direct. And Stanley looks like Stanley's taken it. Coming out of the last turn. Looks like uh, Anderek went for the defending into 10A and 10B, but Stanley was able to get by it this time. Let's have a look at the replay of it. Just defending, as you said, into uh, 10A. Compromised line out of 10B, and great job from Stanley to maintain the momentum through 10B and just get a much better exit. Force... Andrak wide coming out of the final corner and through and already pulled a second now that he's through as well. So definitely was getting held up a fair bit. Was Ferris Stanley? It was a good job to get it done though and uh, not lose a ton of time and pull away from the guy. Yeah, certainly Stanley's got a nice little gap that he can work with now. Not so for Robert Harris on the other hand. Caron continuing to harass the... Uh, the huge rear diffuser of that Porsche yeah I watched him last lap he was uh he was really close and I think I think he is going to make an attempt definitely should happen sooner rather than later but again you can't you can't help but get the feeling he's waiting until after the pit stops for that uh for that move to be made Remember, the Harris other... doesn't have it. Uh, the luxury of fuel saving. Sorry, Glenn. 
my bad. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, the other thing too is Karen is is fuel saving from from the draft. So Harris is lifting and fuel saving. Karen is drafting and fuel saving. So we'll see how that works out. Plus the cars, you know, use fuel a little bit differently. So we'll see how it shakes out in the pits. Yeah, we got to remember the differences between the cars as well. This is the uh, Harris's car. The 911 RSR runs a naturally aspirated flat six. Meanwhile, Caron's BMW uses a twin turbo V8. So they do make their power differently in different areas of the circuit. The drivers have to be aware of that. The other thing that could change this little battle is look at who's just ahead. The battle between Cameron and King that we were watching before is literally two seconds oh, up the road. Wow. You can just see. Yeah, so yeah. This, could, uh, this traffic could change how this plays out. If uh, the guys ahead continue to battle while these two leaders come through, that could uh, cause a change of position. We've seen that many, many times before. I feel like they might be heads up, but these guys have been battling for a while, and, and Dan looks hungry to, to get that spot. So uh, he might they might be totally focused on what they're doing. And, and uh, yeah, it might be really difficult to get by these guys. It's a potential opportunity for sure. We'll have to wait and see. They probably won't come up to them until the end of this lap. Considering the way the pace is separated between these cars. Yeah, they're see. catching them pretty quick, it looks like. I mean, they're, they're right on the back of Dan right now. Yeah, goodness me. Big grip through the S's from Harris and... That Have a look at that big boy in the right revision there. camera, though. How how oh. awesome does that big boy look? It's just filling up that revision camera, so he uh, <laughs> he'll be trying not to concentrate on those headlights. But uh, Andrew Caron will be applying a lot of pressure, and this is a real, real nerve-wracking time here for Robert Harris. He did a good job getting past he Dan King, who moved out of the way very nicely, but it uh, doesn't look like Shane Cameron's going to make it quite as easy. He's going to use this to try and get a bit of a break on Dan King. Yeah, it'll be interesting if Dan can uh, can use this to his advantage as well. Though. We'll see oh, yeah, how it shakes go. out. Just about. Looks like uh, Cameron is right in the thick of it now. And seems like Caron may have to wait a few more seconds. This is hurting him. This is oh, no. really hurting Caron right now. Oh. Yeah, the... Yeah, he's really not uh, not helping his race. He's trying to pull away from Dan, it looks like, and uh, Karen's having to deal with it. He's finally gotten by. We lost nearly a second there, did Karen? So it's now out, well, over a second, 1.6 now the gap. So it's going to be a bit of hard work for him to get that back. We know he's had good pace, but he's just lost all of that opportunity to fuel safe. And in the background, it looks like all that fighting from Shane Cameron hasn't been worth it because Dan King's through. No, yeah, that didn't work at all. That was a great <laughs> move by Dan. You know, he just... Shane had slowed himself down, slowing down that lead group and uh, fighting through the corners. And Dan just sat back and waited and uh, took advantage of it. So that was that was really a uh, smart move there. Meanwhile, Seth Pierce and Justin Rem having a Titanic battle for seventh and eighth. And Seth looking a lot more secondhand than Justin oh. at the moment. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, Marcus Deck in trouble again. He's hit the wall hard there too, so I think he might be day done. Unfortunate for Marcus Deck. He's requesting a tow from race control. We'll see if that's granted without bringing out a caution. Remember, there is a no escape rule in the Geodesic GoPro Championship as uh, you can't just escape back. Fairly heavy hit there for Marcus Deck. And oh, that Ferrari had a bit of a rough time as well. Wyatt. He's been in the wars for sure. Bit of just, these, curves, these curves are really difficult and can throw a, you know, you go over the curb 30 times and it's great. And then you hit it that one time and, and it's not so great. So, uh, a lot of risks these guys are taking and you, the cars are showing, uh, showing it <laughs> with how beat up they are. Pierce in the pits, meanwhile, looking to get some of that damage repaired, or it could be a scheduled pit stop. We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, Whalen has caught up to the back of Johansson. This is for third in GTLM. I'll tell you what, I am very impressed with Whalen's form in this. 
He took advantage of that uh, early incident, gained a couple of spots, brought him back up to the back of the field. But ever since then, he's just been able to pick passes off and pick up positions. Last lap, well, pretty much every lap, he's been about a half second quicker. Of course, yeah, Hanson battling that damage from earlier on when he was sitting in second position. But uh, still a great drive from Whelan to come back through the field. Now well and truly in potential passing range. We could see it in a turn one here. He's closed up really quickly. Oh, boy. It's not an easy place, turn one, to pass people. What was uh, Whalen's laps coming uh, when he was coming up in that car? I didn't see it. Well, just then, he his just did his fastest lap of the race. That last lap by was his fastest lap, 16-1. 17-1 uh, oh, wow, okay. for Johansson, so a full second quicker that last lap. And I, uh, I'm looking at his laps now. Aside from the opening laps and the caution, the only time he's dipped into the 117s was lap 27. And that was a 17.050. All his laps otherwise have been mid to low 16s. Wow, great. He's doing a very, very good job being very consistent. Out on track, and the that car is was the nice pace of the leaders, too. Yeah, it is. He's, uh, well, actually, last lap by was the fastest car out on track. As we said, he did his fastest lap. So uh, the closest to getting in the 15s out of everyone else in the field. And here comes the move. No, backed out of it the last second. But it's forced a little mistake there for Johansson. A little bit of a slide coming through 10A. Oh, here we go. Look at the run that whalen has got, but he's not able to take advantage of it. That last turn that is just flat out in these cars. Could this be a turn one move? No. Whalen actually lifting off a little bit early. Yeah, that'd be a brave move. There's not a lot of braking there, so it's, it's really hard to get inside there. It's really the... Uh, it's only the kind of move that you'd be able to pull off in a downforce car, if anything. Yeah, Hanson's starting to look a little bit scrappy here too, and you just see the way that the car's bounced off the curb there. He uh, doesn't look like the car is behaving anywhere near how he would like. Of course, there is a fair bit of steering damage from that hit on the wall. You can see the damage on the, uh, the right front, front fender there, but he uh, doesn't look as comfortable as he did early on, and, and that's no doubt due to that damage, and possibly a little bit rocked from that as well. Uh, always messes with your head a little bit when you have uh, a little incident like that. I think you're right, because he, like, a little bit early in the race, he had some really great lap times, so there must be something uh, a little off in that car. Oh, here. Whoa. Whalen that was showing his nose there, <laughs> but... Uh, Johansson did a really good job to not let him have it. He he took his line back without. Uh, it's hard to judge when somebody has their nose almost to the apex, but you just let off the brake and go ahead and take the corner. Uh, so he did a really good job defending there. Yeah, another thing to consider with 10A and 10B is they're much faster than they look. So you've uh, you, you end up going into those turns thinking that you'll be able to do one thing, but. Uh, you end up uh, having to change your strategy because you're going a little bit faster than you think you were. Johansson using those curbs very nicely. It look, looked uh, reasonably stable, but I reckon he'll be looking for a little bit more stability, especially with that bright green Porsche behind him. Yeah, Wayland's avoiding... That's good. No, Wayland's avoiding those curbs a lot more, but still producing good lap time. So, um, you know... Johansson's having to take more risk to, to stay up front, but you can see him uh, increase the gap when they go over curbs and stuff. Uh, here we go. Maybe we have a pass attempt here. Yeah, well, this is the earliest draft that Whalen's gotten all race, and looks like it's completed. Oh, no. Johansson's going to try and come back at him here. Oh, he's on a he shot took it. The line back. Yeah. Whoa. Good that was incredible. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a great job holding this guy off. So, I mean, obviously, he had the inside. Uh, but he went ahead and just released the brake and took the corner away and, and uh, you know, didn't give uh, Waylon much of a choice but uh, have to slow down the car and, and let him by. Which is perfectly fine. I mean, re really good uh, racecraft for him. So. Yeah, especially considering the area of the track as well because that 10A and 10B complex, if you're on the outside coming into that, you've almost got no chance of getting by unless you're ultra brave. Oh. You have to... Whoa! Goodness me, and they're coming up on a GTD as well. This could get spicy. That's Shane Cameron in front of them. Yeah, it's getting uh, bogged down a little bit here. Hopefully, he gives himself a gap so he can get a run. But I don't. It doesn't look like he really did. Uh, but 
Oh, he's getting away. Okay, he's got a draft, so he should be fine. Well, both cars having a nice big draft here in Whale, and you can see already closing the gap. Cameron lifting off. Doesn't want any part in this. They're absolutely neck and neck, these guys. You cannot pick them apart. Have a look at the wheel work here, Race, as he comes up over the uh, over the curb. Watch, look at how, oh, oh. look at the opposite <laughs> lock he had there. He was so sideways. Coming, <laughs> coming out of uh, the S's, it was incredible that he nearly didn't hit the wall again. I've already seen it once, but that was some good commitment. And that, uh, that car ahead probably distracted him a little bit too because he caught it just at the wrong spot as we're just seeing some pit stops really starting to come into play. Simon Avatar now in the pits. Our second pit stop in GTLM. Yeah, we've got a car exiting the pits just up ahead too, but this is where it's at at the moment, the battle for third in GTLM. Very low gear for Enzo Janssen, trying to spool up the turbos of that BMW as much as he possibly can. But Whalen, once again, he's proving to be very slippery in a straight line. Is Johansson going to protect the inside this time? No, he's not. But Whalen's staying behind. That's crucial. It's a really interesting fight. These guys are... are really playing a big game of chess right here. They're trying to work out what each other other's move is going to be, working out each other's strengths and weaknesses and trying to plant the cars in the exact right spot to defend and attack at the right time. This is really interesting. And we've just passed the halfway point in this race. 45 minutes gone, 45 minutes to go. Yeah, and we will see the vast majority of pit stops happening in this second half of the race. You can see the gap that Johansson pulls out coming through the S's, but when it comes to exit, right there, you can see Whalen much better on the throttle, as uh, as Glenn pointed out, using less of those curbs, getting a much smoother exit. Oh, there oh, no. go, Johansson! Oh, just oh, locked no. the rears. What a shame. So, that's going to be a few positions at least lost for Enzo Johansson. Have yeah, to that was coming off the break. I think, you know, those tires are starting to go and uh, entered the corner and maybe just came off the brake a little too quickly. And the car came around really quick. That, that would have been really hard to say. Yeah, and it was right before... It actually, it was right after the turn-in point, but before the apex as well. So that's when the car's uh, getting all loaded up as well. So he didn't have much chance to save that at all. Yeah, the car is always the most difficult uh, as you first come off the brake and enter the corner. So uh, it, it came around really, really quick for him. So I think uh, <laughs> there wasn't much chance of, of saving that. Well, Ferris Stanley in the pits as, uh, as Caron continues on. These two guys are really matching each other lap time. One will put it in a, a low 16. The other one will come back with a low 16. So they're, they're stretching and and closing the gap up. It's got going out to two seconds, dropping back to a second, stretching out to two seconds. So these guys are are really trying to work out what to do best, probably caught in two minds, whether to fuel save or whether to push and try and stretch the gap or close the gap. It's uh, I think, a real difficult spot in the race right now. You know, I think they must be. I think they were fuel saving before, but I think when that gap formed, Harris must have put the hammer down because Karen's had trouble closing that gap back down. And if Harris was fuel saving, the, the gap would come down a lot quicker. And of course, Karen wants to be in the draft because he's going to save fuel. So, uh, and he wants to be as close as possible on the, on the pit stop. So I think Harris sees that the pit stops are coming up. They saved fuel. So why don't we go as hard as we can now that we have the gap? And, and that'll be advantage for us uh, going into the, to the pit box. Well, the other thing yeah, too, you don't it. want to save fuel and lose too much time because if you lose, say, another second, that could be enough to not even warrant the fuel saving. It might lose you too much time and you can't get it back in the pit stop so it's a, it's a real tough decision to make whether to go fuel saving or not and I think uh, Karen will be a little bit upset that he passed that uh, car of Jordan Fisher quite as easy he probably would have liked it to be on the straight to get a little bit of draft as opposed to uh, coming through the back section of the circuit 
Yeah, let, have a listen. I'll try and have a listen to Harris's um, engine coming off of that straight away. But I, I think he's on it right now. I think he's just putting down as, as quick a lapse as he can. Uh, and no fuel saving for any of these guys at this point. Yeah, yeah they were driving. Saving, saving any fuel, sorry, Rex. All good. They were they were driving to a number up to uh, up to this point. Now that the race has entered its final half, it's just flat out from here, I guess. Turn one was a big region where Harris was saving earlier when uh, Karen was tucked in behind, but just then you could hear from the engine noise, definitely no saving. He's uh, pushing it as hard as he can. Last lap by, both doing low 16s. The only other driver to do 16s, Whalen and Johansson both did 16s that last lap by. So uh, Johansson's found himself back in fifth. He's got a fair bit of ground to catch up to get a spot back from uh, Jason Withrow. Seven and a half seconds to gain to get another spot back. So your hands will be really, really disappointed with how this race has played out so far. Yeah, he absolutely will. He's been one of the guys that's, uh, that's shown the most potential in this series, but he uh, he's just gotten caught up in, uh, in other incidents and made mistakes, and that's really hurt what, uh, what could have been a good championship position for him uh, coming into round three. But he's still holding on. He's still getting those top fives, which is good to see. And now, as the race enters its final 40 minutes, he may just be able to jig the strategy, try and get himself a little bit further up. Miller, meanwhile, he's been the perennial second place holder in this series so far. Have Lockwood a look at that gap won to Lockwood. pretty easily. Yeah, certainly. 18.8 seconds right now is the gap, first to second in uh, GTD. It's pretty much Brian Lockwood, then the rest of the field at the moment. No real battles in this class at the moment. Th uh, two or three cars have come in and made their stops, so that could change things. But the, the gap that Lockwood has, he could almost pit and change tyres. That's how much of a lead he's got right now. Change tyres and still maintain the lead. That's an incredible gap. Yeah, certainly is. I mean, it, it just seems like uh, Lockwood just sets his eyes forward, the tunnel vision turns on, and from that point, it's just lap after lap after lap, and he is completely untroubled right now. But Miller perennially uh, seems to be a bridesmaid in this one. He was challenging Lockwood at Phillip Island until uh, some unfortunate circumstances eventuated. Meanwhile, we see a demonstration of GTD versus GTLM through the last turn, and it is just as awkward as it looks. It's Zach Plummer <laughs> letting uh, Andrew Caron through, and it's, uh, looking at the uh, the lap times, Zach Plummer needs to be a little bit careful of Jordan Fisher behind. Fisher has been closing in around about five or six tenths a lap every lap for the last little while. The gap was around about eight or nine seconds, but Fisher now within four seconds, so... Uh, it won't be too long before we see Jordan Fisher right on the tail, and we're also not too far off seeing all of these cars in the pits. We know the GTD ran about 60 to 65 minutes to a tank of fuel. GTLM ran about 55 to 60 minutes, so we're within the next, say, four or five laps. We're probably going to see almost all the field in the pits, and that's when the race will get really, really interesting. Absolutely, because... You don't just have to think about pit stop times and the like. You have to think about actually getting to your pit box and being accurate with that first up. Because we've, we've seen a couple of occasions in this series already where drivers have overshot their pit boxes. Having to reverse back in, that costs them an extra second or so, which can make all the difference. And the other thing too, the uh, speeding in pit lane, we saw at Phillip Island, we saw two, mm. two or three speeding in pit lane uh, issues, which uh, one of those was Miller that you talked about. That was his incident that uh, potentially cost him the fight for the win last round so it, it's really really easy to to speed in the pit lane on entry because you want to be so committed you don't want to lose half a tenth a tenth half a second by being too cautious every single little component makes so much time as uh, Jordan Fisher is in the pits so uh, every single second you can gain in the pits is a huge advantage but you don't want to push it too far and drivers always do push it too far because it is the one thing that drivers never, ever practice. No matter how much we talk about yeah. it in these broadcasts, practice your pit entries because it's so much time that you can gain or lose. 
Oh, it could lose lose so much more time on a pin entry than uh, than missing an apex. But guys will practice all the apexes. Never once will practice a pin entry. It always confuses me. I'll put my hand up. Guilty. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that. Uh, I've been guilty of that some too. <laughs> so. Uh, that's something I find really bizarre though, because you lose the same amount of time oh, with a poor pit entry than you do. Well, that's awkward for Caron to get through. Um, but you lose just as much time on a pit entry as you do missing an apex. But you practice that apex a hundred times, but you don't practice a pit entry ever. Well, and how you stop in the box too yep. affects, which is great about iRacing. If, if you don't stop just right, uh, your guys can't put on the tires very well, so uh, it affects your time as well. So. Yep. Um, yeah, everything has to be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So there's our does. tip of the day if you are watching. Practice your pit entries. Practice <laughs> pit entries. <laughs> practice stopping in the box because it does make as much difference as missing that one apex you can never get right that you practiced 150 times. That middle pedal that, that makes the car slow down, learn how to use that effectively. <laughs> <laughs> Caron got held up really badly when he got past uh, John Miller there, so he actually lost around about another second. So it was about 1.7. Now out to 2.6, but these guys will probably pit, I reckon, next lap. Maybe another one, because of course they had those laps under caution, so they would have saved a bit of fuel there. But I reckon yeah, 44 laps. Killing them. Yeah, 44 laps, I reckon, will, will be about the limit that we'll see in these cars, the GT LMs. Just, uh, Karen's just had, uh, you know, I've seen Harris have a little bit of trouble with traffic, but he's he's been handling it, or at least catching them in the right spot. Um, and, uh, Karen keeps losing out. So. We've talked about this many, many times before too, Race. Usually the guy in first is the one that's compromised because the, the lap right. down drivers don't notice the leader coming and then all of a sudden the leader's gone past and so they're a bit more aware. But today right. the, the leader's been okay and the second place car's the one that's being held up. It's it's not what we would normally see in these races. No, that's correct. And I guess the the biggest reason is, once again, the track. Because you've got, oh dear, David Browning. That's uh, Harris's GTD compatriot for Team Tortuga. What happened to him? See, this is one of the places oh. where, yep, that's what the curbs can do. And That went early. Glenn, Glenn mentioned it before. you you got to be a wizard with those, uh, with those dampers if you want to get these things to ride the curbs effectively. And it just seems like... Yeah, a little bit too much steering input there. Sent the car into a tank slapper, and the curbs just compounded the issue there. Yeah, that when he hit the curb, the wheel was pointing the wrong way already, and then the car wanted to go to the right. So, if you are going to hit a curb that hard, and even in real life, you got to have the wheel straight. And uh, and again, the setup definitely helps as well. One hundred percent. But this track really the only place you can easily get by uh, traffic is uh, the braking zones into the corner coming onto the back straight and coming into 10A and 10B. Pretty much everywhere else, it's 50-50, uh, it's especially considering how close these classes are in, in pace through the mid corner. We're going to see an example of that here with, uh, with Mr. Johansson. Coming up to a GTD into turn three. Would he be able to get it done under brakes? No. No ABS, remember, in the GTLMs, so they have to be careful. You can't mash the brakes in these things. Yeah, that's great to see that skill set uh, come back into um, these GT cars because, you know, the ABS is great, but it's, it's great to see the drivers have to uh, modulate the brakes, not to lock up if it's a brake efficient. It adds that extra element. Yeah, it certainly does. And Johansson seems to have um, gotten himself into a nice rhythm at the moment in fifth place. Yeah, ever since he's had that spin, his pace has actually been really good. So he's probably just uh, had a little second to, to cool his head and, and take a deep breath and come back. He was closing in at around about nine tenths of a second on uh, Jason Withrow ahead, but that... Uh, Mercedes That's that he's just impressive. gone past has uh, compromised him a little bit. But it uh, was down to about three and a half seconds. It's back out to four now, but we'll see that gap close back down again. An interesting Robert Harris, 16-1 last lap by. He's flying at the moment. The gap is now three seconds between he and Caron. That is the biggest we've seen all race. 
Man, that is quite the gap that we're seeing there. And he's been he's been putting down the lap. I mean, you can tell he's been driving hard ever since that gap formed when they were going through traffic. He's been pushing since then, and and he hasn't made any mistakes, not any big mistakes that I've seen. It. So uh, he's looking good. Question on my mind is how long is it going to be before these guys come into the pits? Because they will have to uh, they'll have to come in fairly soon, I would imagine. Well, there's my number wrong. I said 44, and they're about to start 45. So, uh, at, nothing unusual with me being wrong, though, Rex. Actually, <laughs> they just they just started lap 46. So, oh, okay, I'm very wrong. You're even more off, Jay. <laughs> you're even more wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing unusual. You <laughs> sound like my missus, Rex. Oh dear. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> um, Zach, Zach, <laughs> Zach Plummer is catching up to John Miller. I'm going to get a slap over the head. You're probably listening. Oh, no. um, <laughs> Zach, Zach Plummer starting to close in on uh, on John Miller as well. Plummer, as uh, last lap by was identical lap pace, but the laps previous he was around about two or three tenths quicker. So it is closing down. And Johansson is the first of our lead runners in GTLM to jump into the lane. This will be a good opportunity for Johansson to get some of that damage repaired. Get himself back into something resembling a race-ending rhythm. Oh, he, there we go. Oh, I jumped. He overshot yep. it. He overshot it, man. What did I say? <laughs> it's almost like you predicted that. Here's everyone coming in as well. So we've got Shane Cameron in the pits. We've got Philip White in and our race leader, GTD. Brian Lockwood is in the pits. Let's see if he uh, stops on his box okay. That looked pretty oh, good. Yeah. It wasn't bad, that one, was it? Certainly not. Well within the yellow lines. So it'll just be a fuel top up for him. The tyres on these cars, they uh, they last an awful long time. I remember uh, actually in the, in the official iRacing Le Mans 24, um, my team Fusion Sim Racing competed and they were quad stinting tires through the night hours so <laughs> these uh, these GT cars they treat their tires very nicely interesting the pit stop times for Johansson and uh, behind him Justin Rem were identical but the pit lane transit time two seconds longer for Johansson with that uh, missing of his pit box it cost him two seconds that's how much it's worth practice it people practice it <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Yeah, to make up that two... I mean, just think about trying to make up two seconds on track. It's uh, huge, huge to make up on track. Easy to lose, really tough to find. Wayland comes out, 19.9 .9 second stop, so pretty much the same. And here comes our leaders. Yeah, here we go. So Harris into the pits now. Caron actually staying out, interestingly. So... Caron needs to put in a qualifying lap out. here. This has to be one of his fastest laps of the race. He has to absolutely fly out on track right now. He might be okay with traffic or just ahead. Who's that running off the circuit? Okay, that's... Uh, that's that's Johansson. Wow. That's Johansson up ahead. So Johansson's still having some issues through his pit stop. This is not going to be easy for Caron. It's got him at the same time. He is here. I mean, blue flags aren't uh, aren't a absolute 100% get out of the way sort of rule in sports car racing. So Johansson doesn't have to immediately let him go, but particularly with pit stops, you know, you never know. So yeah. I, th I think he's perfectly fine to defend if he wants, but uh, maybe he'll let him by. We'll see. Looks like he lets him by, no problem. And he got a little nice draft off of that actually, so that may have helped him. Yeah, that's going to help him. So might Harris be an extra tenth of a second stop. he saves in the pit stop there too, just from that little bit of saving. We'll Very see how he takes the pit box here. He's entering the pits pretty quick. Oh. Well, for context, Harris's pit stop was 18.1 seconds. We'll see how Caron compares to this. Interesting that Harris's pit stop is the shortest out of everybody in the race so far. Also saying that Jason Withrow is out of the race, which is disappointing because he was in a decent spot stop on the box there for Caron. Yeah, he went in he went in conservatively which uh, which is always the safe option. Harris meanwhile 
is definitely going to retake the lead here. Because Caron is still stationary. He just went as Harris went by. Identical pit stop times for Caron and Harris, but one second longer in the name for Caron, so a little bit too cautious coming through the lane. Oh. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, you can see you look cautious there. So, I mean, you got to you gotta hit your mark. So, I, I guess it's worth being cautious. Just Har uh, Harris did a good job. So, so 3.4 well. is the magic number with 26 minutes to go. And Harris has got uh, one hand on that $50 cash for the win here. I just said so Withrow was Withrow. out of the race, but he's not because he's just had a two minute 15 pit stop and he's back out again. So uh, good to see him back out, regardless of what the issue was. Only one car left to pit as well. David Browning on his 47th lap in this stint right now. He must be going to come in this time. Yeah, absolutely must. Uh, of course, we saw we saw Browning with a couple of issues before, but there he goes into the pits. So after the stops, a gap at the front of GTD now, 26.7 seconds. John Miller to Brian Lockwood. Incredible gap that he's got at the moment. Yeah, it seems yeah. like uh, that's going to be the, the shape of things to come if uh, if Miller doesn't um, step up in terms of pace because Lockwood seems just relentless right now. First flying lap out of the pits and he does a uh, an 18.6. The only other driver to do an 18.6 was Miller. Ferris Stanley, the only driver that's quicker at the moment. He's closing in, <coughs> excuse me, on, on uh, Zach Plummer again. So uh, we're going to see some spicy battles at the back end of GTD. Sorry to cut you off there, Glenn. Oh, no, I was just watching uh, Brian Lockwood's car, and uh, he's from his end car, and he's just able to attack the curbs. Uh, the car gets a little bit of oversteer. He handles it really nice, but the car looks really good over the curbs, and uh, he's just plugging away. So uh, he looks pretty unbeatable uh, in his class. Just nice got this car up. Got this car dialed in. He just looks so comfortable. It just all linking in. He's just one with the car. It's just so smooth, and simple, and under control. He's doing a great job. And you actually have the leader uh, coming up on him. I, I'm, we'll see how he he handles that. He's <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is a good photo opportunity. Both class leaders on track in the same little section. Oh, you see how much Lockwood is bouncing over that curb at turn three. Almost ran wide. It uh, hasn't hindered him very much, so should be okay from there. Looks like and he's letting him by. Yeah, fairly simple lift to let Harris go there. And Lockwood's not really got any reason to fight, has he? Might as well just let him through, lose the least amount of time. It's not like he's got any battles coming up behind him. Is it just seeing the uh, Team Pugas car running off the circuit there? I believe that was uh, Shane Cameron. As he lets Caron through, it's still at 3.1 seconds. So a little bit back in the favour of Andrew Caron last lap by. I, I think this is going to come right down to the last lap, these two. They're, they're getting closer ever so slightly every lap. Still got about 20 laps of racing to go, so still plenty left that could uh, change how this race plays out. Absolutely. Uh, Harris coming across the line now. We'll compare their lap times. It's a 16.836 for Harris. Meanwhile, Caron, a 17.16. Lost a whole okay. heap of time coming out of the chicane there. It's now at uh, 3.4 seconds, so... Turn 10 A, 10 B has cost him a huge amount of time. We're going to go to a battle. We've actually got a battle out on track. Jordan Fisher is he's making his way back through. Now, I believe Fisher took tyres in the pit stop. The only driver in the field that has done so. Because his stop was 49 seconds. Oh, yeah. So, here we go. This is going to be a position change here. And he could get two because just ahead, you can see the 131. The orange car just ahead is uh, Jack Andrak. So, Jordan Fisher with these two tyres... Uh, Fresh tyre advantage. He find himself a few spots here. Yeah, he's eating these guys up right now. He's closing in on the cars ahead as well. Yeah, beautifully poised from Jordan Fisher there. And, wow, he's caught up to Anderek quite quickly. You can see the the change in momentum. Anderek not going to let this go too easily. Oh, no! Almost. 
almost <laughs> <Super cost. close. laughs> That was almost a repeat of lap one in GTLM. They managed to get Dead it level. done. Oh. Oh. Did they hit them? That was so close. That that was surely a been a tap. Surely. This is a three-way battle now. <laughs> it's a great little fight going on between these three. This is four, fifth, sixth, and seventh. But have a look at the grip that Fisher's got coming out of the corner. Just able to plant the throttle with those new tyres a little bit easier and a little bit better. And now Andrak's going to feel some pressure from behind from Stefanoski. Well, this battle, uh, 20.2 for old, uh, 20.6 for Anderek. And an 18.2 for Fisher. That's the pace difference with new tyres. Yeah, he so really is falling away. Yeah, he's just a dot on the screen now. Well, Stepanovsky, be interesting to see what he does versus Anderek here because, uh, it's been a race of attrition, as we've said. And the likes of Stepanovsky stand to profit quite a bit from this. I mean, uh, Stepanovsky started 24th overall, now in 17th overall. And I would presume much closer now to the front of his class than he was. So he keeps uh, he keeps up this form. He should be on for a very good finish. I believe he started uh, ninth in class, so that's plus two. Interesting, just looking at the gains and losses uh, in regards to overall positions. Only one car that is still running has lost a spot from where they started overall. That being Seth Pierce, who uh, had that longer stop. He's actually had to come in the pits twice, I believe. So Pierce started overall in ninth and is now overall tenth. Every other driver is either in the same spot or has gained positions from where they started overall. Biggest one, of course, being William Whalen, who started right at the back of the field. Now in third, and sitting there yeah, quite he's, comfortably. He's driving great. Yeah, I was just seeing that. That's 14 cars. That's really good. The other one that's had uh, big moves in overall position is Jordan Fisher. Started 31st overall. Sits in 15th overall. Now 5th in class. 31st in class. Was pretty much second last on the grid. Enzo must have uh, fixed his car pretty well, because he's... He's running top pace right now. He's just slightly quicker than Waylon, but uh, a little ways back. The gap's probably a little bit too much at the moment, 12 seconds. So he, he really needs to hope that Waylon makes a mistake. But the way he's driven at the moment in this race, William Waylon's done a great job and looked really, really smooth and consistent. He's just about to get a move done here on John Miller, so a bit of draft to help. He's a long way back from the guys ahead, 30 seconds. But uh, it's really in no man's land, actually. Uh, William Whalen just uh, in a race all by himself right now. Yeah, I think uh, you can't quite get to the leaders. Just take care of your tires and manage the gap back to Enzo. Last lap by Harris, 16.6. Caron, 16.5. Uh, so another tenth back in the favor. Oh, here we go. This is messy. Oldenowski. And Dan King together. I think there's been an issue there for um, Stefanoski. Something's happened to him because he's lost five seconds to Andrak, who he was right behind not that long ago. And Dan showing his nose, trying to... Ooh, they're both getting they're going on the inside. Dan's on the attack. Dan's uh, plus... Ooh, there's been contact, actually, with... Uh, one of the Porsches, was that uh, Simon Avital? It's uh, spun the car of Stefanoski around. Ah. Just uh, lost race for a little bit. He's uh, just got some tech issues, so hopefully he'll be back in a sec. I'm just uh, seeing on the timing screen. Ferris Stanley closing in on Zach Plummer. Last lap by was the second quicker. Now down to 1.4 seconds. So this is getting very, very tight very, very quickly. Also, Caron now back within three seconds. Last lap by seven tenths quicker. So this oh, race wow. is really starting to get spicy with uh, only just over 15 minutes to go. Around about 14 laps of racing left. Must have been must have been traffic because that's, that's a pretty big uh, yeah. gap to make up there for, for Caron. Interesting thing is there's not a huge amount of traffic out there at the moment. 11 cars left in uh, 
GTD and 10 left in GTLM. So it's uh, still a fair bit to, of racing left, but there's not a huge number of cars out on track at the moment. So surprising that there's been as much traffic as I see a car around through 10B. That is Philip Wyatt. What's happened to him? Has he been helped as well? Been a few clumsy mistakes out on the circuit in the last little while, hasn't there? Oh, Dan King was involved there too with uh, the leader, Robert Harris. That's so. That's where that's he's lost his sight. Awesome. Yeah, I was reviewing that. Okay, yeah, that was. Let's see how bad it is. I'm just reviewing it again. Replay on board with Harris, and you can see. It's, uh, oh. Oh, that's a heavy hit too, so he could actually lose a little bit of straight line speed from that. So uh, we'll yeah, see. It might the gap's shape now the down to two up. seconds, yeah. Yeah, what was it, three seconds before or when he first came out of there? So we'll have to keep an eye on that gap. Yep. But it looks like uh, Philip Wyatt and the Ferrari lost it. Dan had the check up, and Harris also had the check up, but not enough. He, he luckily hit Dan square, so they don't, both didn't spin out. But, uh, but yeah, there's definitely some damage to that car. I think uh, what spun there is the uh, the car ahead that he was trying to get past. I think he was predicting that it was going to make it a little bit easier considering that um, the leader wasn't too far away, but wasn't to be the case. And uh, Simon Avatol is back in the pits again as well. So as we're just seeing a move here for ninth and 10th. Jason Withrow, who we saw in the pits for two and a bit minutes. It's just gone through and back up into ninth position. Seth Pierce drops back to 10th. Ferris Stanley has just gone through on Zach Plummer as well. So while we were just watching that pass, teammates have changed yeah, position. Nice. That wouldn't have been too hard a pass. We will get a replay, but I don't think there would have been too much in that one. And I was wondering uh, what the leader's lap would be after that damage, but he's he's running a 16.9 to Karen 17.2, so it looks like uh, if he does have damage, he's, it's not too bad. Uh, so he's a little bit quicker than his competitor, right? Their pace is looking pretty good as well. As we're actually just seeing, too, the gap now is at 1.7 seconds. The gap so has decreased, uh, yes, you're right. Karen, pretty much in draft range now. You can see the damage on the front of that car, so that will definitely be hampering the straight line speed there for Robert Harris. So he'll be disappointed with how that's played out. Just got in the wrong place at the wrong time with that traffic. Uh, Karen, see will how be he can it. manage it. Yeah, I think um, it's it's definitely going to slow him down. But he's again, he's uh, he's quicker than Karen on that last lap. Uh, I'll have to check the timing board again. 17-0 for Harris, 16-6 for Caron. So three tenths back in the favour of Caron that lap by. And now it is 1.5. And you just see Caron looks a lot smoother through the um, through the S's than Harris does at the moment. I think Harris probably still trying to work out how much that damage has affected the car. Yeah, he's probably pushing it a little bit as much as he can, but being cautious at the same time. And... You know, he makes it work for a lap and puts a good lap time in, but some laps it does the car does something unexpected and he loses, you know, six tenths. So uh, we'll see if he can keep it together to then. Unfortunately, it looks like Reese might be out for the rest of the, uh, the broadcast as well, which is a bit disappointing. He's having a huge amount of tech issues, so he'll, uh, he'll be disappointed because he's going to miss out on a fantastic finish to this race. It's, uh, it's, it's been thoroughly enjoyable so far. It, it definitely has been, even even with um, a lot of the attrition, there's been a lot going on, a lot of fights. The leader's trying to get past some traffic here around Enderic. Enderic lets him by, no problem. Gap at the line then, back in favour of Harris. So they're just uh, ebbing and flowing this gap, trying to stretch it is Robert Harris. There's 10 laps to go. We predict so I mean that we will have a 69 lap race our original thinking was 71 but caution period at the start but that uh, lost a couple of laps but the pace of this race has been incredibly quick these guys are lapping so fast uh, used to watching the iRacing V8 sorry around here and we see usually see 20 21 22 second lap times to see times in the 15s right. and 16s is incredibly quick it's great to see how nimble these cars are and how well they behave around this circuit 
Yeah, they just flow speed through all these, uh, a lot of medium to fast speed corners other than turn seven. So uh, they, they do a really good job there. Karen got uh, in second place, got held up a bit by some traffic there, uh, but he needs to, you know, he's got a, he's got a competitor, his enemy's uh, hurt right now. So he needs to see blood and, and put down some lap times see if he can catch the leader. At least get in, you know, if he can get in the drafting range, then uh, he might have a shot at it. See an issue here for Seth Pierce. He's uh, oh, looped it around. We've seen that how many times looped it around in the the shoot between seven and eight, and back uh, around he goes. He has lost a bit of ground, but he uh, now will end that fight he had with Jason Withrow. So, so we go back to the front. Oh no, Karen in the wall. That's a heavy hit too. Oh no. Oh, he just rode the curb a little too much. Oh, that's terrible. Just going through the S's. Gets up on the curb. Wow. And just throttle steers into the inside wall there. That car is very, very heavily damaged, so he may... He's struggling. Have a look at the smoke billowing out of the back of the car. So he's going to lose the podium here. This is game-changing. Like yeah, he can't keep the wheel straight down the straightaway. It's cocked sideways. And Waylon in third is about to enter turn seven now, so he's getting on the back straightaway right now. And yeah, I think Karen's basically done. Yep, that's race over by the looks of it because the uh, you can see the um, the radiator how damaged it was when it hit the wall as well. So. William Whalen starting in the pits. He's going to find himself in second position now. That's incredible. I was just thinking that. That is incredible. That's a, a tough drive. He's just banging out lap times and, you know, letting everybody else make mistakes and just keeping it on the road and doing a good job. So it's paying off for him. And that's what pressure does in these sort of races. Um, the consistent lap times from Harris has just put pressure on Caron to try and push that car a little bit too hard. And that's ended his race. Well, that's the point. Yeah, Harris Harris did a great job. Even with that damage, he, he he it was harder. You can see the drive of the damage he has, but he was still putting on, on lap times that put pressure on Karen. And Karen had to push that little bit harder with the tires going and, and uh, hit the curb a little too hard and race over. Battle battle out on track for 6th and 7th at the moment between Philip White and Tracy Nolte. They're both trying to maneuver their way through some uh, GTD traffic, uh, traffic, if I could actually speak English. <laughs> so, uh, you see Tracy Nolte trying to get through, and you see Philip White not too far behind the class-leading car of Brian Lockwood. At the moment, Lockwood's lead is huge. I can't work it out. My maths, maths isn't good enough this morning. It's still, well, it's afternoon now here. 32 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> 32 second lead he's got now incredible yeah i think he's he's he can cruise if he wants to i think he, he's still banging out laps is the funny thing i mean he could he could just keep the gap at 10 seconds but you know he's uh he likes to do it 100 percent all the time so uh he's just putting in as quick a laps as he can so taking that risk but uh having fun Ferris Stanley's really, really quick. Speaking of quick drivers at the moment, quick lap times. He's got that gap right down now. He and John Miller are separated by three seconds. Last time we looked at that, it was around about eight or nine. Last up by another six tenths of a second in favor of Stanley. Oh, wow. So with uh, around about seven laps to go, he's gonna be right on the tail with one or two to go. This is gonna be really intense. Yeah, he'll definitely, I think he'll definitely be with them. Miller tries to uh, hold on. You just see just behind that is the car of... Can't quite work out who that was. Yeah, uh, Hanson just behind. And Andrew Caron out Ooh, of the race. Oh, that was close. Johansson almost got into the back of him. You can see here on board with Johansson. The car ahead is a second place John Miller. Third place car Ferris Stanley. You can see the headlights in the rear vision camera. Gap between these two cars now 3.1 seconds and closing and closing very very quickly so if uh, miller doesn't lose too much time when your hansen gets through it'll be okay but if he has to compromise his line and loses momentum 
He's going to get force white here, which will ruin his run into turn one as well. So this is all happy times for Ferris Stanley because he's going to gain so much momentum, so much ground. Gained a second in that second. That. Yeah, I just that. I think it's better Johansson went by because they were getting. He was getting pretty close to his bumper there, but uh, but yeah, it definitely slowed him down some more. He didn't need that, and uh, I think that fight's going to happen even sooner now. Yep, definitely will. 2.1 seconds a gap. You can see the two cars in the same shot now, so they are getting very, very close together. John Miller will uh, be starting to worry a little bit. He may have short-filled the car in the pit stop. That could be the difference. We do know that the uh, fill rates for the Audi and the Mercedes are different. The fuel tank sizes are different, so uh, making sure that, the, that you get enough fuel in the car is so crucial and that could be what Miller's doing that could be why his pace has dropped off you might know that they have to go an extra lap from his original calculations it could be a lap short well, on fuel that's, that's a good point he is he's running if you just look at lap time he's fairly close oddly on Enzo's pace we'll see what the lap time's like but I don't think he'll be able to use that draft to I think Enzo will just pull away yeah gap's gone back out to about two seconds we'll get a lap time from Miller this time, an 18.8 for Miller and an 18.3 for Stanley. 1.9 seconds now the gap. This isn't the only battle going out on track. That battle between Philip Wyatt and Tracy Nolte is still going on as they've just passed Brian Lockwood. There's still battles going on out on the circuit. Great to see all of these guys battling and battling hard. It's uh, been a very, very intense race. And uh, just shows that it's not over until it's over, especially with that mistake from Andrew Carroll, which we did not expect at all. He looks so good. But uh, one small minor lapse in concentration, one tiny minute moment of overdriving the car, and that's ended his day and thrown away a podium. Yeah, that's a huge shame. I'm watching Tracy and Philip fight here, but that's a, a huge shame because that was shaping up to be a great uh, finish to the race. Tracy is uh, really putting pressure on Philip Wyatt right now in the in the Ferrari ahead. Yeah, it's a good battle, good fight going on at the moment. So watch them start another lap. Uh, Philip Wyatt's going to have to try and hold on here. Still got a few more laps of racing. Four minutes left on the clock, so not long to go. But uh, these guys are, are really trying to get this position. It's pretty crucial positions for a top five position. The points break down in the championship. Do uh, do drop away a fair bit. Top five versus a, a top six is a pretty decent difference in points. So pretty crucial to make sure you, you keep your championship alive. This one position could be very, very crucial for that. Yeah, it's heavy, heavy towards the top. Um, and we'll see how this, this traffic plays out. Let's check Andrak just ahead. The, uh, the 131. See just in the rear vision camera, Brian Lockwood just happy tucked in behind using the draft. And if he, right. if he uh, wants, he can save a bit of fuel. Not that he really needs to at this point. Three laps to go. This battle's still going. And Ferris Stanley has not been able to close that gap into Miller. It's still sitting about 1.7 seconds. So that uh, battle continues on. We'll stay with this battle here because it is the closest out on track between Tracy Nolte and Philip White. They look pretty even through the S's there. Yeah, the the uh, the cars look like they're behaving differently in all the other parts. The S's is the one section that they look very very similar. As White runs very very wide, looks like he's got a decent run. Yeah, he's run. got the draft now. Yeah, yeah. Nolte might close this up now. He's pulling out of the draft for some reason there. It's surprising that he wants to get out of the draft there, does, uh, does Nolte, so... Come across the line, they'll hear that it's likely two laps to go, with two minutes left on the clock. But, uh, Robert Harris... ...is uh, just coming through the S's, so he will get the white flag next time by, by the looks of things. So, uh, what yeah, a race is going to be. Yeah, and I guess maybe Wayland gets driver of the race coming from 
from the pit yeah, lane up to second. It's been a great drive. So. That's, that's really impressive. Uh, obviously, there's been a little bit of luck, the, uh, the caution at the start due to that big incident. And that helped him not only get back to the back of the field or get up to the field, it also helped him gain a few spots. So, uh, you, you've yeah, been and very lucky with that. And some of the guys that were in that incident, whether they carried on or not, they had a bit of damage, you know, that slowed them down. So. Sure. Really. Robert Harris coming through turns 10A, 10B and up under the bridge with 1 minute and 15 left on the clock. We believe this will be the white flag. And 1 minute 8 on the clock to start the final lap, we believe. So it looks like this will be the last time by. So that means Tracy Nolte has to get this move done and move done quick. Just doesn't quite have the pace at the right times to get it done. That lap by identical lap times to those two. John Miller, Ferris Stanley, that has not changed. Still sitting over one and a half seconds. So we'll stay with this battle here between Wyatt and Nolte. Wyatt taking a really alternate line there to almost open the door for Wyatt oh, to go alongside. That's yeah, getting dicey. Have a look at the momentum that Nolte's got coming through the S's here. Can maintain oh, the momentum. Wow. Oh, big slide. He did a good job to save that. He's trying. Yep, definitely is. White doing a great job of holding on. Clock is just about to hit zero. We will have to cut away for, from this battle in just a moment because Robert Harris has done a fantastic job in this race. Led every single lap bar the pit stops. Robert Harris will cross the line, pick up another win in this championship. Congratulations to the Team Tortuga driver. Winner, round number three of the GDS at GoPro Championship. Ryan Lockwood will cross the line with the win, but still on for these minor positions. White looks like he will hold on, but Nolte's given him a great run for his money, and I think Nolte realized that not enough left in the tank, given up the spot. So White will cross the line in fifth. Six goes to Nolte. Brian Lockwood just cruises across the line nice and casually. Great result. <laughs> right. Great job from him. John Miller's lost a whole heap of time. He's lost uh, seven tenths of a second on this lap. Ferris Stanley is closing. Is there a fuel issue here for John Miller? He is closing really fast. I don't know if it'll be enough. It is downhill. A cough could be enough though. Looks like it'll be okay. So John Miller will hold on for second. Great drive and Ferris Stanley the recovery drive after that early incident. Found himself last runner in GTD. Got himself back into third. Great job. William Whalen finishes in second position. A great drive. And Enzo Johansson finishes in third in the GTLM class. We will get the results up on screen. Robert Harris picks up the win from William Whalen. As we said, 37 seconds in the end. The gap. And Enzo Johansson, Justin Rem, the only drivers on the lead lap with Philip White, Tracy Nolte and Jason Withrow also one lap down with Seth Pierce and Simon Avatal also one lap down. And then the heartbreak story, Andrew Caron finishes eight laps down in 10th in the end. Disappointing for him to end up in the wall. Marcus Deck in 11th also did not finish. And then the casualties from the lap one incident, Marcus, uh, sorry, Jonathan Brolt, Anthony Pizzardo, Trevor Clement, J uh, Tyson Meyer, Thomas Hins and Dominic Oliveira all did not complete the race as we go to the GTD results. Brian Lockwood wins in the end by 34 seconds. Then uh, John Miller and Ferris Stanley second and third. Zach Plummer, the only car on the lead lap as well in fourth. Jordan Fisher, one lap down in fifth with Jack Andrak, Older, Stepanowski and Dan King, the top eight. Then we go to Shane Cameron, David Browning, Andrew Taylor and then the early casualties, Aiden Gober, Esper Drilica, Ryan Oliveira, and Gabriel Pereira. We're going to take a very, very quick break, and when we come back, we will have post-race interviews, chat to our race winners, and dissect the end of this race. Thanks for watching us here on Simspeed TV. We'll be back in just a moment. Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have.
Chile Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the holy grail. Fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rhythm. He's got rhythm. Maloney. Oh, he's, he's taking Anderson. Him. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. Oh, 
this is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh my oh god. My god, what? Welcome back here to Simspeed TV here on the iRacing Esports Network. Post-race coverage of the Geodesic GoPro Championship. We'll go first to our winner in GTLM, Robert Harris. Congratulations, Robert. It looked all too easy when you look at the results on paper, but uh, definitely wasn't as easy as uh, the paper shows because you had a very, very tough fight for most of the race there with Andrew Caron. Uh, yeah, me and Andrew had a really good race the whole race. Unfortunately, a lot of the competition looked like it got taken out lap one, turn one. But uh, after that, me and Andrew definitely had a good fight. Uh, we were both saving fuel, it looked like, through the middle part of the race. Uh, and then it uh, seemed like there was a little gap. I think I got lucky with traffic. And then uh, uh, he looks like he just uh, spun. And then uh, I was able to get away. We uh, did notice that in the, the middle of the race there, both of you fuel saving, but you're fuel saving in different spots. Were you worried that uh, if the gap stretched out a little bit or, or if you did get past that the fuel situation would have to change and you'd then have to get back into racing mode? Well, if uh, Andrew got past, uh, my plan would just be to do what PC's doing. Uh, if he wants to push, if he can push, I'll just sit behind him, but I would assume he would have fuel saved too, so I would you'll say behind him if he got past. We uh, go on next round to Silverstone, a track uh, very, very new to the iRacing service. Looking forward to it. Getting out there and, and throwing it around in the UK. Uh, yeah, Silverstone sounds fun. Uh, hopefully it will suit the Porsche nicely and uh, hopefully we will have a good race again. Congratulations, a great result. Who would you like to thank before we let you go? Uh, just thank the guys at Team Tortuga. Uh, they're amazing and do a lot of work. So I just want to thank those guys. And once again, thanking Geodesic for putting on this series and race. Congratulations to you, Robert. And uh, some prize money coming your way in the next few days as well with $50 cash, thanks to building optimization so, uh, systems. So congratulations on that. Go to our race winner in GTD, Brian Lockwood. Congratulations. Same to you. $50 coming your way. Uh, again, looked easy on paper, but... Uh, very, very strategic race from you, but you're just too dominant for everyone else in the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think I got really lucky at the start. There were a lot of incidents going on behind me. Uh, I know John took some damage. Ferris got uh, had a little off. And Jesper, I don't know what happened to Jesper, but the, the three guys starting behind me all ran into issues. So it was just a matter of keeping the car on track. Um, you know, Red Atlanta is an awesome track, but it is tough to do an endurance race here. So I was pretty exhausted at the end, just trying to keep it on track, finish the race. How did you think... Thankfully, uh, I managed to do that. Sorry, it was just cut you off there, but how did you think uh, it went in regards to traffic? How did you think uh, traffic management was? How did you think the uh, the faster-paced cars handled maneuvering their way through and past you guys? Uh, the faster-paced cars were all very patient with me, and I, I, you know, I had enough of a gap that I could let them by very quickly. Um, there are a couple... Guys that I, I ran up on that did hold me up a little bit. There were uh, there was one weird rejoin, but overall I think it was a really good race. People were really respectful of each other. Well, as we said just then, we we go into Silverstone, a, a semi unknown quantity with uh, with these cars, with it being the new version of the circuit and a new release on IRAC. Looking forward to getting out there and doing some laps at Silverstone. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited to race on the new Silverstone, but I'm actually not going to be able to make it uh, next oh, race. Nice. I'm going to be racing in real life at Mid-Ohio in the Global MX-5 Cup. Uh, but look, look, I think that's a fair enough swap. I, I'd, I'd prefer to do that <laughs> than, than, uh, than be out in a, in a virtual track. But, well, good luck for that, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back on track in this series very, very soon, and uh, you have another good result when you get back. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely Gonna looking forward to the next one. Uh, anyone you would like to thank before we let yeah uh, before we let you go, if I can actually speak English, I'm having trouble with that, aren't I, uh, Glenn? I've had uh, trouble all afternoon. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd like to thank everybody at RKE, TRN, the usual, um, you guys for the awesome broadcast. You know, you always do a great job, and special thanks to Glenn for coming in. Glenn's my driver coach in real life. I enjoyed so, it. Uh, Awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. I appreciate it. We look, uh, we look forward, enjoyed watching you, Brian, and, and looking forward to coaching you in mid-Ohio and 
you know, you had good pace at last race, just some bad luck. But, um, you know, I think this is going to be a good race at Mid-Ohio for you. So hopefully everybody tunes in to watch that as well because uh, those races get exciting and, and Brian does a good job in those races. So definitely uh, check that out. Yeah, good luck oh, yeah, for that race. Motorsports.com. Uh, we'll go next to John Miller, second place in the end. John, congratulations on second place. We uh, we commented throughout the race that fuel could be an issue coming up to the end, and Ferris Stanley was coming right at you, but you just held on for second place. Talk us through it. Um, yeah, and honestly, I really don't think it had a whole lot to do with fuel. I mean, I was saving a little bit, but uh, you know, at the same time, Ferris was uh, he was he was gaining pretty easily on me so uh you know it's a shame what happened there in the beginning with ferris uh, he was very quick in practice obviously quick in qualifying so uh i feel really bad about that looks like it was some net code um uh, but you know i mean that's, that's part of what happens uh, sometimes when we're racing virtually but you know it was a good race i'll take a second uh, again i didn't feel like I, I ran a great race uh as far as my pace but uh, you know overall I'll take i'll take second place often in these sort of races being consistent is just as important uh, as being fast, talk us through uh, how the race went through the mid-phase and how consistent the, the lap times were and just managing that clock and managing that gap. Well, I think kind of midway through, I, I was able to kind of uh, kind of get my pace and uh, kind of get my bearings. I didn't have a, a lot of practice time the last couple of days, but, uh, and that lasted for a, a little while, maybe 25, 30 laps. And then uh, I felt like my pace really started dropping off. Uh, I think my tires were... Uh, a little angry at me there towards the end. So, uh, you know, I was uh, having to change my breaking points and so forth and not be quite as aggressive, but had a, had a bit of a gap that had built up in there. So I was able to kind of lay off of it a little bit. So we were just saying we go forward to Silverstone next round in two weeks' time. Looking forward to that one and uh, maybe uh, get rid of this bridesmaid position. I'd love that. I, I, I would love that. And it's, uh, you, you know, it, I, I love Silverstone, uh, the new layout, and I think it's going to be very exciting for us. And, uh, you know, other than Brian's lame excuse of having to go, like, drive real life race cars, like, you know, he's not going to be there. So, uh, you know, I, I do look forward to it. I think uh, I think we're all going to have a have another solid race, and uh, I look forward to it. Congratulations on a great result. Who would you like to thank before we let you go? Uh, usual suspects, uh, Racing Network, uh, Racecraft Engineering, um, you guys, and the Geodesic. I think it's, uh, you know, this far into the season, uh, I think everyone is, is very pleased with how things have gone. Uh, I think the the Racecraft on track has been very respectful, and, you know, hopefully we can keep building upon it. There were some nice uh, cash prizes put out there this week, and, uh, you know, the more we can kind of talk up the series, hopefully we can see it grow uh, each season going forward. Yeah, 100%. It's been really, really good so far. Congratulations on another good result. John Miller, and we go finally to Ferris Stanley, our third place finisher. Congratulations on P3. Definitely didn't go your way. Definitely an eventful race for you, but recovery drive back to P3. I think you'd be pretty happy with that from where you were early on the race. Yeah, we're happy about that. It's such a fortune, but that there is happen on that court. I think I'm, I'm going to see the repair again, see how big match code is also the start was pretty bad for me like the audio was really really slow at this track line it's only faster on the corner so yeah i should be happy about recovery to p2 really struggling too with with drop between mercedes like it's really hard to catch up so yeah so it looked like you had some really, really good pace in those last couple of laps. Maybe one lap too short to get there in the end. Did you think you might have been able to get to John? Uh, <laughs> I think maybe, I would say, because it took me take a lot. I would say, because even though I'd get John, he's going to get straight line speed real quick. Even though, I like, when I better fit with Jack, it's just really hard to get up on the straight. You need, the Audi just need to pass the corner but i think i also make mistake in like last five laps or so because i push it too hard and forget about the chair so yeah i think should be happy about the recovery to p3 well, congratulations on p3 for tonight's race who would you like to thank uh first of all the action c sport also especially zach and hayden to help this this car also the strategy as well also they also the support also thanks to geodesic too for the championship and also 
Thank you also as Spit and RC and Esport Network for the podcast. Thank you very much, Freya. Stanley, we, we will wrap it up there. Thank you very much to, uh, to yourself, Glenn, for jumping in the booth and uh, sticking around for the entire race. We weren't sure how long you're going to stay for, but I think we, we enjoyed it that much. We didn't want you to leave, and I'm glad you stayed around. No, it was, I was totally planning the lead, but I got too interested in it. So I was a uh, super exciting race. You know, a lot of attrition there at first, but a lot of respectful racing as well. And, and uh, you know, I, it's better than watching some real races, actually, for me. Uh, I was interested to see how Brian did. And, and then that whole fight uh, up front with Harrison Caron was shaping up. And then there were just fights all over. So I definitely got into it and uh, enjoyed it. So thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure on behalf of myself and Reese Gardner, who unfortunately has had some tech issues. We thank you all for tuning in. Thanks to the geodesic guys behind the scenes, also to GoPro as well for their support on this championship, as well as building optimization systems. Big congratulations to all of our race winners. We will be back with this series in two weeks time from Silverstone. Our next broadcast here on SimSpeed will be later tonight for the Parramatta Isuzu uh, AOSC we go to Silverstone for 650k of V8 racing. Of course, tomorrow we will have the major series and then on Sunday, V8 Scops from Watkins Glen. Until then, we thank you very, very much for tuning in on behalf of the whole team here at SimSpeed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rhythm. Uh, oh, he's got rhythm. 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 Oh, he's got rhythm